First of all, thank you to uh, the Dean um, for uh, inviting me here. I'm very, very honored to be here with you. And first of all, let me congratulate you uh, because uh, to graduate in uh, this moment is such a, a, an incredible experience and so very well done. I graduated in 1996, and uh, it feels like a lifetime ago. And, um, but I think that same, certain things remain the same. So I remember when I was sitting at your place uh, in my time, and I was actually um, uh, feeling two different kind of sentiments. On one side, I was super excited to be, started, uh, to be starting a new life and uh, super anxious uh, for new challenges. But at the same time, I was a little bit sad, you know, of leaving my best friends and people that I've shared so many memories, uh, incredible memories uh, for, for one year. And so this tension between being excited and but at the same time being a little bit sad is probably something that you are also experiencing. Um, in 1996, it was almost a different era. Uh, mobiles were not uh, you know, everywhere. I still remember being uh, left uh, by my car in the middle of the forest uh, in Fontainebleau and having to wait for somebody to pick me up because there was no way to, uh, to alert anyone. Um, but at the same time, as I said, the certain things remain the same. Um, when I arrived here, I was coming from McKinsey, uh, and I remember that I arrived here thinking that I was, uh, you know, very good at collaboration, because uh, in McKinsey it was very easy to collaborate with everyone, because it was very defined and very clear. And then I remember I took my first class when uh, there was a famous uh, INSEAD diversity, and my team was, uh, you know, uh, designed to be as diverse as possible, and I finally understood that I was not, not so good at collaborating, and actually we had the sleepless nights of fighting with each other on how to you know, turn this project work together. But this was really uh, a very good learning experience, because uh, it taught me how much it's important to have a diverse um, number of point of views around the table, but how it is difficult to really be inclusive to learn from each other, to invite everyone to give their, their own opinion, and to be able to put together the richness of our backgrounds and experiences and profiles to create something unique and special. And looking back, this was one of my first learning experiences at INSEAD and something that I'm very grateful for, because it's only creating an inclusive environment where everyone feels that it's accepted, respected, and valued for what he or she can bring, that we can create something special. And being an inclusive uh, leader is something where I, I believe that we can make a great progress and a great contribution to the society because it's not, uh, it's not yet the, um, the, the, what is most common to find in the workplace. During my time at INSEAD, I met people from all continents, uh, all backgrounds, uh, more than uh, 50 different cultures, and I found some of the best friends uh, that I still have. Uh, they are my community. And even now, when I have uh, some doubts on a career move that I don't know whether to do or not, or a choice, uh, they are the people that I turn to. And yes, we've, uh, we've gone to all the weddings, and I've, you know, I'm a godmother of many of the kids, as was mentioned before, from, uh, from my friends. But it's really a community which has uh, a unifying um, idea of uh, what to be a leader is. And it's a bunch of very talented people that share the common sense of purpose um, to have an impact in the world together. This is the spirit of our school. INSEAD, as we heard, was founded um, to really create and mold the new future um, uh, type of talents to create a European Union. And I really believe that uh, uh, by putting together the richness and the diversity of our backgrounds and experiences and the entrepreneurial spirit, uh, we can create value for organizations and communities. There is an African proverb that says, uh, if you want to run fast, run alone. If you want to run far, run with others. And I think this is really, really true. With this spirit and this value, I've embarked in my personal journey after graduation. In 1996, I went back to Italy, and I became a, um, a consultant in McKinsey again, where I worked in the financial sector. But I was curious and eager to uh, learn new businesses and to actually try my own, uh, um, uh, myself in new, um, in new uh, 
um, new ways. And so I, I, I joined a startup which was called Omnitel at the time. It was a telco startup. In the 90s, it was a, like a booming startup world. And uh, I joined Vittorio Colau, who's now the CEO of uh, Vodafone uh, uh, Worldwide, and he was uh, the CEO of, of um, this uh, startup at the time. And my first decision was to leave McKinsey to go for a startup, which was in a way not uh, the normal way um, you'd uh, think of your career progression. But I really believe that it's important to challenge yourself and to try to go outside of your comfort zone, to try something new. Um, and this is probably the most, one of the first learning that I'd like to share with you and my first advice, which is never stop learning. Because if you stop, then it's a time when you really become you know, obsolete and you're losing opportunities. Find a job where you can continue learning. And I have this rule of thumb that every year I do a check and I try to see if I'm still growing in some ways, I'm learning something new or not. And if not, it's really time to change, to change company, job, organization, or to learn something new. But please really consider uh, what can I do to continue learning and developing myself. <clears throat> Back to my journey, Omnital became very successful and uh, it was bought by Vodafone. And um, uh, I then became the head of the consumer division at Vodafone, which was a very different uh, type of company. So I moved from being in a startup, very young, agile and dynamic, to being part of a big organization, a multinational organization. And being, ab being able to adapt and change the way I was working in order to be successful in a different organization was also a big, um, a big, uh, um, a big learning. And um, I stayed at Vodafone for nine years, and then in 2010, I started to feel that I was, uh, again, um, in my comfort zone. I was not learning anymore, and I was too comfortable in what I was doing. And so I decided to go for my next chapter, and I joined Microsoft. The reason why I joined Microsoft is because um, I actually got intrigued by the mission of the company, which says that uh, its mission is to empower every person and every organization to achieve more. So in a sense, it has a, a, a desire to help companies and organizations to transform and to be at their best. And I think this was uh, you know, a big challenging goal, bigger than any one of us, and something that really created uh, the kind of pull that I felt. Um, I had had uh, different roles uh, at Microsoft. Um, I was a COO of the, the Italian subsidiary, and then I moved to CE, so I was uh, overseeing an area in a developing market. And finally, I became CEO of the Italian subsidiary one year ago. Um, my learning is that moving inside a company is uh, critical for your success. Sometimes we, when you get out of the MBA, you think of your career as like one sliding path to the peak of the mountain. But in fact, I think it's very relevant to maybe have some horizontal moves. And career is more like a zigzag than an upward trend. Because this way you can continue to hone and generate new skills and new capabilities that will be very helpful when you finally reach the top. So my second advice uh, is uh, that while you do that, uh, I think it's very important to remain yourself and to be authentic. Uh, to, um, because uh, finally, authenticity creates trust, and trust is foundation for leadership. So for example, when I show up, um, I try to be myself. And so I am a, a mother, a woman, and a CEO. And uh, of course, this means that sometimes I show my vulnerabilities, uh, that I maybe don't schedule meetings in certain moments. I cannot you know, go to certain customer meetings because I have to pick up my kids and uh, you know, go to the end of year um, performance. And uh, you know, finally, this is fine, because I think you need to um, understand that to be perfect is not part of this world, but it's more important to try to do your best and to be yourself, and people will appreciate that. The other thing that I understood in the journey is that uh, actually, uh, if you are authentic and you are yourself with your plus and minuses, you allow others to be themselves as well. 
So you create an environment where you don't have to pretend to be the best always at all times, but you can be yourself, you can admit that sometimes you've, been, you've had failures, but we can all learn from that all together. And so I think it's very important while you, you know, as we said, you need to learn and change and create always more opportunities, but at the same time, you remain true to yourself, to your core, to your values, and show up as uh, the way you are. In particular, by you know, being, a, being a woman, I often get asked, you know, how, do, you know, how is it? Because when we look at the numbers, indeed, it's not very reassuring, because uh, even though um, about 50 to 60 percent of graduates uh, in undergraduate studies are women, uh, only, you know, 35% are in, uh, from MBAs, and already that's much uh, higher than when I did my MBA, which was only below 20%. And then when you go to the corporate world, only 3 to 5% of CEOs are women today. So um, I believe that, uh, you know, this issue is now not just uh, a, a economic uh, issue, because, of course, we are not tapping some of the talent that is uh, out there, uh, but also it's a meritocracy and a justice issue because it's not that the talent is uh, unevenly distributed, right? So um, it's really a, a question of how do we make the most of the talent that is out there in order to create opportunities for everyone. So um, my, uh, my uh, take is that it's really very important to show up as role models. And so my ask to all of the women in this room is to actually show that, uh, you know, going to an MBA like in SEAD is possible, to have a career is possible, and you can be successful as a person and as a professional at the same time. That's what I, want, I do as well, because I think that having the right role models in each um, place in its country, in its organization, is very important. So please give something back also to the other women that will be you know, behind you and looking at you to see how it's possible. As for me, <clears throat> I think it's, uh, uh, it's important to aspire to both a professional and personal life uh, fulfillment because it is possible and it's very rewarding if you can achieve both. At the same time, you need to know that uh, there are things that you will need to give up. So, for example, in my case, for the first few years when I had uh, small kids, uh, I gave up a lot of my personal time for just uh, you know, going to the gym or things like that, which I'm now trying to catch up. Um, but at the same time, I really know what it is important. And then the best advice that I got is to find people that support you around it. So in my case, my husband, my friends are people that support me in this journey, and I think it's very, very important. Best possible career choice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no hat. The last thing that I'd like to say is that... Uh, um, grazie. <laughs> To be the CEO of Microsoft, my own country, is an incredible a source of incredible pride, uh, but at the same time, a great responsibility. As Ilian says, I think that uh, the role of each one of us as leaders is to make an impact and to create a better world around us. I feel I can contribute uh, to make Italy more competitive. Um, institutions, uh, companies, uh, uh, organizations that can, uh, you know, digitally transform thanks to technology and be better at what they do thanks to the technology. And it, when, you know, I meet uh, kids and teachers in school and I try to understand how we can make uh, teaching and learning a better experience uh, thanks to technology, that's personally and profoundly very rewarding. And so this is my last advice or my last thought. Find something that is really meaningful to you. Find your mission, find your purpose, and align that to, to what you do. Because if you can do in your job something that you're passionate about and it has meaning for you, you will be great and you will have an impact. So for me, the question would be, what is the difference that you can make in the world around us? And uh, I think this would be the best thing for you to go out, to be very successful, but at the same time, leave your mark. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of uh, the graduation.